I'm Katie Visco, and I've been running across the United States of America. I started in Boston, the Atlantic Ocean, and tomorrow I will be jumping into the Pacific Ocean in San Diego, and I'm, like, I'm beyond excited. I'm doing this for a very important reason, to inspire people to go for their passions in life, to go for their dreams, to go for their goals. And I talk about passion and that's like something, you know, that gives you wings or something that makes you feel like you. And so running is that for me, running and trying to make a difference in the world. I'm also raising funds for a charity called Girls on the Run, where girls, elementary schoolers and middle schoolers join running clubs. They run, they play running games, and in the process they, you know, play games having to do with self-respect, how to be a strong girl, how to eat healthy, how to set goals, how to stand up to bullies through the sport of running. I love it. Kansas was the best state because you know, like, if you want to go to a state where people will like see you and then automatically hug you and offer you home-baked cookies, then you should go to Kansas. Every day is about 18 miles. Normally I'll run the first seven miles, take a break, eat some cliff bars, uh, you know, rehydrate, and kind of rest for 20 minutes, and then go out for another seven miler. Then we'll break for lunch. We've gotten really good at making sandwiches, I have to say. There's nothing like an avocado in your sandwich. And then I'll go and normally walk the last one or two miles just to cool down my muscles and all that. You know, I reached a limit of mine about three weeks ago where my knee all of a sudden, I just couldn't run on it. Literally, it was like in a matter of two seconds, no symptoms, nothing. And even though I can't run for these last three weeks, I'm walking. I'm still taking the steps. So that's my pushing through the wall. I'm excited to take my next step in life, but also like, I'm just thinking about the people who will be at the finish. And they represent the people who have been with me across the whole country the past nine months. Like I'm thinking about the people I met in Pennsylvania, the girls on the run team I met in, you know, Iowa. And like all these people who have some kind of connection to this run, like cause this run is for other people, right? So I'm thinking about all those people now. And like, they're gonna wanna know that I did this because they believed in it. So I'm so excited to show them that, you know, I did it and they were a part of it. So tomorrow I, I'm just gonna be like a, a mess. <laughs> and my family's gonna be there, so like, just a mess. girls, I want to tell everybody, everybody out there, something I said right after I came out of the ocean, you can go for your dreams. You can do what you want to do. You can do it. That's, it's simple. Just do it. And you'll love it. That's what I want to say. That's it. That's it. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Katie is actually live in the studio. We're so live. We <laughs> She's here, physically. She's no longer in San Diego. Um, so we wanted to bring Katie back. Um, you were here before the run, so it's been yes. like a good year, I think. Oh, it's been Because like you two came years. before like the kickoff. Is it two years? Oh my God, it's been it's, two years. Yeah, it's been like almost two years. Well, you know what makes it seem like you know, you gone but not really gone is because of like social media because mm, you know, we're mm -hmm. keeping track and it's like we know where you are so it didn't feel as <laughs> bad. So, you know, that's actually one of the questions I had for you in terms of even before, during and now, yeah. what role did social media play in sort of getting a message? Social out media there? was huge. There's I mean you guys you guys know the all the stuff, but like Facebook and Twitter was all right and Facebook was awesome mm -hmm. but and the website that I have, paveyourlane.com, is actually yeah. um, a Ning. It's a Ning, yeah. Ning platform, so <laughs> it's connecting people online on the site. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was really cool, so people could follow along. Of course, it With was everything. a huge instrument I know, in the whole I thing. Know. 
So so that's great. Um, Abbott is on the phone, so this is going to be almost like a three-way interview, Hi. live in the studio, on the phone. Um, so and then also I, we've been talking since you've been here. You know we continue to sort of follow progress, talked about what you've been doing, and um, you know Candace wanted to know what kept you motivated during your run. Yes, uh, you know that's a great question, and so it was two hundred and seventy-six days of Plus, running. Yeah. So it, yeah, that's a great question. Like on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, you know, what kept you going? Mm -hmm. And it might sound corny, but to be honest, the people that I along met along the way, the way okay. absolutely the people, because the people I met along the way, whether it be people who I've never met before, mm -hmm. who decided to host, right. host us in their home, you know, they all have some kind of reason for wanting to help. Mm -hmm. And so those people gave me motivation to hold myself accountable to a dream and so i can't i can't not do it because mm -hmm. i have these people who yeah. are supporting me and wanting to be a part of the dream so right. it's the concept of it takes a village you can't, let, you can't let your village down right so the people i met and the people that i knew i was going to meet to along meet. the way because this was for the inspiration this was for inspiring other people mm -hmm. yeah. that was the the, the mission yeah. so but yeah, then you also had it. Teen Katie at home and along the way, and I think you probably have oh a bigger God. Teen Katie now because, because did, did you have people <laughs> running? I don't know. I don't know why I came up with that. This is all on you. Um, oh, did so you have people support? Like, did you have people running along yeah. the way and yeah. as you were running as well? You know, I gotta or yeah, running get, clubs. I don't know. I know. I gotta give a shout out to the most informal running club mm -hmm. ever, which is the name of the running club that I'm in here in Boston. Oh. And it's a group of wonderful people who really supported me before and during I ran. So, and yeah, there were running clubs all across oh, the country who came out to run, anywhere from a four and a half year old boy in Illinois to an 80 something year old oh man my God, that. in somewhere in Kansas, I don't even know. Somewhere but there. all kinds of people. Wow. Who had all different motivations. And you have tons of pictures. So Nang seemed to yeah. be like the hub for everything, even though yeah. you do have a Facebook page. Yeah, um, the website's the hub. Yeah, and then along the way, I know you also talk with the gr you know girls and and other mm -hmm. teens about what yeah. you're doing yeah. and and the importance of yeah. running in your life. Yeah. For example, let's just take if I did this run and just did it myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and just decided I'm gonna go running every day and that's it. It's right. a personal journey, right. whatever. It w I would not be motivated to keep going. Right. It yeah. it would be pointless to me. So, I mean, you can think of it as like a running speaking tour mm -hmm. where the point of it was to connect with and speak with as many people as possible about hey it's possible to go out there mm -hmm. and at least take a step towards the things you believe in or live your values and go for the things that you actually love that give you life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was just some <laughs> hopefully like some example. But this was beyond running because at first when you said it yeah. I'm thinking oh my god running across America it just seems so huge because even for me i'm thinking like even if you said oh running across cambridge you're running across like oh massachusetts it would have seemed yeah. like seriously because you know <laughs> especially when we're thinking now it's like people are not that active so mm -hmm. if it was like walking across maybe you know what i mean but just the idea of like running at the same time you know spreading your message almost across yeah as you're doing it yeah you know? i think about messengers in the past and just any kind of messenger like how are they fueling themselves mm -hmm. yep. and so I just choose to use running because it gives me life I'm going to use that to spread a message and I want to continue to do, do that it. across yep. this country because I believe in, in believe in following your passion which is great so talk to us a little bit about pave your lane which is sure. um the organization I wanted to show people your picture sure pave your lane is actually a concept and so it's actually the name of my website so if you go to pave your lane dot com I don't know what that picture is. I don't know. Is, but <laughs> it's on your website. And I don't know what that picture is either. But oh, why? These are just oh, pictures. Are. This is like in Kansas where I spoke to middle school girls and signing autographs nice. after a talk. But so Pave Your Lane is where you can get a hold of me and everything. Mm -hmm. And Pave Your Lane is a concept. And it was a foundation for why I ran across America. And it's the foundation for why I continue to, go. well, spread this message. Mm -hmm. So Pave Your Lane is essentially a concept or a campaign where it's about paving your lane in life. Mm -hmm. And so what does that lane look like? If you could close your eyes, if you can do the things that, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would your lane look like? And so 
the other thing is like there's a lot of lanes out there that mm -hmm. are paved for us already. Mm -hmm. There's right. a lot of models that suggest certain possibilities, which is a good thing sometimes, but sometimes we strive for those lanes or we go down those lanes or strive to fit those models mm -hmm. and we lose ourselves. So mm -hmm. paper lane is about finding yourself or at least asking yourself the question, what do I value, what mm -hmm. do I want to do, and paving your lane to pursue that endeavor. Mm -hmm. That's what paper lane is about. I almost have to be fearless, I think. Fearless? Yeah, oh. because I think, oh. like you were saying, like there are some lanes that are already made. And I think we live yeah. in a culture where you feel pressure to sort of like fit in a certain way, yes. do certain things. Yes. And so actually one of our theme last year for the conference was to dream bigger. Because I think sometimes we bigger. say, you know, because you like dream big or I want to yeah. be just like a certain person you see, but you want to go beyond. So it's yeah. almost like, okay, Katie did this. But do you want to do exactly what Katie did? Or can you go beyond that, yeah. bigger than that, go, in a way? Bigger. I mean, go it's still bigger. part of the inspiration because you can do just that or do something you want to do personally. Uh -huh. But I think for me, when I first met you, it's almost, it sort of want to push sort of like the possibilities sort of than just what's been presented to you. Yeah. You know? I love that concept, dream bigger. And Much like, bigger. You create your own. Especially girls. I mean, I think we're still <laughs> struggling to sort of like, okay, yeah. you don't have to just be those things you see right. on TV or what celebrities yeah. are. I mean, there are so many other things going on the, on the world that can be pursued beyond fame, money, and the usual Absolutely. values we see in our culture now. I think two things. You mentioned a good point about fearlessness mm -hmm. and... To be honest, I was scared to do this. Mm. I think fear is a motivator, especially, well, at least to me, I, from my experience, having fear or having some kind of, oh my gosh, what mm -hmm. if, right. it motivates and it also, to me, tells me that there's something to lose, which means it's important to me. So, you don't have to be fearless to, to follow do your passion. <laughs> that's what, Just that's what I think. Just go for it. Yeah. So... It's, fear is an yeah. interesting thing. It is, it is. It can <laughs> be. Abida, are you still with us? Yes. Do you have a question for Katie? Hi. Um, not yet. Not yet. Oh my God. Do you? What do you think uh, about? Uh, go ahead. I think the phone broke up. I didn't hear. Oh no! I was saying, what do you think so far? Uh, what Katie's been saying. Do you agree with what she's saying? Oh yeah. I think her story is very interesting and inspirational. It can help a lot of people who are, you know, have trouble with. Um, school and stuff, you know. I think she makes sense when she said fear is a motivator because for some people that is true because, like, fear sometimes has, sometimes can allow you to, like, make yourself do something. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting, okay. isn't it? It is. I mean, what about you? Do you think about, because even talking about follow your dreams and doing things like, have you, have your thought changed about things you want to pursue now that you going to college and doing different things? Well, it definitely is scary. And um, usually, like, um, before, I was kind of scared to do, like, certain things, like, even come to college, I was really mm. scared of doing that. And sometimes I would kind of say to myself, I'm going to do it, but then when the time would come, it would kind of feel weird because kind of in my mind I would be thinking, yeah, I'm going to do it, but almost like it's not, the time isn't going to come. So when the time would come, it would get a little scary, and I would, like, be afraid to do it. But when I actually do it, I would actually feel like there's other things that I can actually do. So I think my mind frame has changed with that because usually I guess I wouldn't be realistic and kind of think that things are just going to happen. But now that I'm in school and I'm going to um, the next school in the fall, I kind of, like, have changed my the way I think and how I do things. I mean, I think it's great because I, you know, I wonder if there's a difference sometimes between, not necessarily age, I don't know, sometimes when you meet little kids and they come up with stuff that they want to do and it's never sort of the way adults think. So they'll be like, I want to be an astronaut and I also want to be a writer. <laughs> and then, you know, I want to be a runner. So to us, in our head, we're like, this makes no sense because <laughs> you can't do all that stuff. And I feel like sometimes it's almost that idea, mm. like, it doesn't have to be, you know, like Abido was saying, like, realistic or, yeah. you know, to have this perfect plan laid out where everything has to kind of fit perfectly right. for it to make sense. So I don't know. Sometimes I think 
like kids make better sense with stuff and they dream differently than us as we get older i don't know what changed um in a way so i don't know if you notice that as you're meeting the girls if they're more they seem more kind of ready yeah. to do things yeah it's it's interesting because depending on the age because i i speak with a lot of like k through 12 mm-hmm. year olds yep. and you know boys and girls and so in elementary school there's all kinds of dreams. Yeah. There's all <laughs> kinds of goals, you know, professional football right. player, or I want to be a veterinarian, or I want to go to, I don't know, Italy. Mm-hmm. And so it almost doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it doesn't harm anyone, right. or it's, right. you know, doing good in the world. But it's the practice. Mm-hmm. It's the practice of the journey to accomplish something Sorry. that you have some kind of value in. So that's the inspiration for young people. And if we continue to have that practice, Basically, it's about questioning yourself. Mm-hmm. This is what this is about. Continuously, questioning though. <laughs> yeah. You have to keep doing it. And living the questions mm-hmm. throughout life. I mean, if we knew the answers, then why? Well, what's the point? So, yeah, it's a continual yeah. journey. So how do you think you've grown since the one, or since you've mm-hmm. been back here? Oh what has been goodness. different personally? And I've, I can't tell you how inspired I've been. More than even before you started. Yeah, I mean, I've become convicted more than how more than when I when I started mm-hmm. about the need for some kind of inspiration. Like it doesn't even have to be me, you know. Like some kind of inspiration out there to say, hey, there, here's a kick in the butt. Think of the things you love to do, and you can do it. Mm-hmm. Just there's so much need. And then the other thing, switching gears a little bit, is the humanity of people. I mean, particularly in this country, Mm -hmm. is that people do want to be a part of something bigger. And so here's a practical tip, is that if if you have a goal, if you have a dream, then ask for help because people, it's an opportunity for people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be a part of something bigger. So So that's the other thing, too, because then it's not just... It's not just about huh. the individual. So right. as you were doing this, it seemed like you almost built a community along yes. the way, or even a bigger community, yes. an extended family Yep. in a way. Um, one of the questions the girls asked was, would you ever consider running outside of the USA as a way to increase awareness about what's going on with girls in other countries? Mm-hmm. You know, I would love to run across <laughs> I don't know where. The world. <laughs> run across. That's, been, that's great. I would love to run across the world. Um, However, I think that what I know is this country, Mm -hmm. and so I would love to do more work in this country. Hence, in 2012, I'm going to be embarking on a 50-state series, Mm -hmm. which is literally running from, for example, school to school to school in each state. And it'll it'll be like a multiple year Oh, okay. um, So that's a long, a longer, longer trip. But we'll see when those other countries come. I mean, and see I'm not putting it out of the... Out of the I mean, I think it's great. I mean, especially now. I mean, I think looking at what's going on around the world, especially girls. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a huge thing in terms of thinking about education and thinking of yes. even health, for example, because part of your campaign in terms of girls running, being healthy, mm-hmm. using your body for something great and physical. Um you know, I don't think it's just sort of like a domestic or U.S. situation. It seems no. like it's across um, the world. So I think in a way that question sort of goes to that and seeing what's going on, you know, whether it's in, yeah, you know, whether it's in Haiti or Japan or other places where things are happening to girls in whether it's different continents or wherever it is, that that message seems to be universal. Mm-hmm. Um, even though your work will we may, hmm. may we made or maybe based within yeah. the U.S., but I'm hoping people are inspired worldwide to yeah you know Marie that's actually pretty inspiring I'm I'm glad you brought that up because yeah using your body for for good purpose Mm -hmm. especially for young women across the Nate across the world is something that is transcendent of boundaries so but I mean especially you know with all the wars that we have we know like you know Mm -hmm. women's bodies and girls and children Mm -hmm. And it, it's using different, but for you to sort of feel empowered, whether it's running or feeling yeah. strong or, yeah. you know, because I, as I was listening yeah. to the tape, it's like, you know, dealing with bullies and different. So it's not, you know, limited to a very specific thing. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. So I'm hoping somebody, but again, it doesn't have to be within that community. There might be others who could sort of like run with that part. So I want to talk a little bit before we run out of time sure. about what you have planned for the rest of the week, because I know your <gasps> time is like a limited 
in Boston and you're gonna be leaving a wonderful city. I know it's a wonderful <laughs> city, but it's always Hopefully in my you heart. always come back. Always come back. <laughs> always. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so, so Wednesday. Wednesday is a really cool event. It's happening at the REI on Park Drive mm -hmm. in Boston at 6.30 p.m. And what it is, it's called Under Your Own Steam. And it's a panel mm -hmm. of people who have run or biked across America. So if you want to come and hear stories of travel or be inspired to go on a similar journey or just to be entertained, mm -hmm. <laughs> come over. it's, it's going to be yeah. wonderful. It's going to be great. And there's two panelists. I'm going to be on the panel. And then there's another fellow who has biked basically like all over the world well, yeah I so yeah so that one yeah. is very easy it's right in the Fenway people can take the green line buses mm -hmm. get off it's like in the middle of a shopping yeah. <laughs> area but Aria is great because it's you know it has all these outdoor stuff and yeah. people can come out and hear your story um, and then also the other news is you I don't know if other people know what are you, are you writing is oh, that coming up or yes. is it just <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> no, I'm currently writing a book about my run across America and okay. the mission behind it of passion, essentially. And so that is a long process, and it will probably take at least another, another year <laughs> to do that. So we'll we'll see, but it's a journey to come on. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's great. I mean, finding a way to capture that. I mean, I know you did the chapter with mm. chicken soup. Yeah, chicken soup, soup for the soul for, for runners. There's <laughs> yeah. a little story I wrote See how there. a chapter in there. <laughs> um, so I think, I mean, there are a lot of people who are supporting you, and then there are other activities. So are you going to continue the soup events elsewhere outside yes. of Boston? Yes. <laughs> how did that even come about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, it's just another example of you can do what you want. <laughs> you like, can do what you want to do if you believe in it. So, yeah, I host soup parties okay. once a month to build community. And they originated in Boston, and I recently moved to Austin, Texas mm -hmm. last month. So I had one there, and it was cool just a house. wonderful cool day. Of, yeah, combination of it's people. It's interesting. I thought about it. I'm like, hmm, a soup party. I've never thought about yeah. that. I mean, like, people do different things, and we've been trying to think of different ways to bring people together. Because sometimes it's like when you're holding meetings. meetings, if you say, oh, come to a meeting. But I don't know oh. if the soup and the food will be a big draw. And entertainment. You had entertainment at the... Um, yeah. The last one. So that's always a plus. So you're going to continue that in Texas? Of course, every month. So what drew you to Texas as a... Oh. Your next... It might sound silly, but the sun. <laughs> the sun. The sun. And I really want to finish this book. So I wanted to... Go there. Write in the out of doors and be inspired by nature and an open-minded, wonderful community. Very similar to Boston, actually. Mm -hmm. Austin, though. Just... Austin, Austin and Boston are both great places. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know about like the whole state of Texas itself, but I've heard like, but I've heard great things about Austin. Like, I, you know, in terms of music and so many great things, and um, I mean, I know we have a lot of transplant in Boston from, from oh my Austin gosh. as well, from all over the place. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that should be interesting. And so, the other piece, I'm trying to go through all the questions the girls send you mm -hmm. and see. Um, if we can cover them all. I think we cover them all. Oh, Abida, good. any questions? Um, no, I think I got all the information. You cover all the bases. Well, thank you for being on with us. Um, thank you. And then I'll send you Katie's page on Facebook. Abida is always on Facebook. Always. Oh, right? Of course. <laughs> she practically lives on Facebook. Uh -huh. Um. So we'll send you info. And then I think the other question was thinking about, um, you know, like the key message to girls, because I don't know how many since you're going to be leaving in terms of if they ever have an opportunity to hear you face to face. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I mean, what's the main message to them, regardless of the age? I mean, I know you, you speak yeah. with a range age group, but. The main message is the world needs more people who are alive. Mm -hmm. And a way for you yourself to come alive and therefore change the world and affect the world positively is to follow the things that make you feel alive, okay. that give you life. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's going to take a lot of hard work, but a, just a tip and something that I did before I, you know, started to, to embark on a goal is to write these things down, like, today. Today. So you have a specific... What today. was your goal today? My goal today is to make it 20 miles out to Walnut Mountain and 20 miles back on my bicycle. Uh, but anyway, the point is you can start today, today. by writing down your values, mm -hmm. your passions, the things you love that give you life, and your goals. 
that's it the end oh and i forgot i told you there was like another little surprise um that i have to give you so at the conference so yeah. what we do at the conference every year we give um an action award to different uh -huh. um girls abida was there remember abida um so we you were one of the action award winners what <laughs> it's not you it's not the oscars it's okay Lee. wow that's so cool purple is our color as you know so everything award? has to go yeah so Get what it out. as you know oh, like for honored. everything it's all about like encouraging girls to do to speak out on different things and we, yeah. we thought you were the perfect role model Oh, it's flashy. <laughs> the perfect role model to girls in terms of someone who's doing something and not just yeah. talking about an issue, but being, okay. I mean, going out there and running across America, we thought was huge. And, you know, part of our wow. goal is to recognize when those things are happening. Because I think mm -hmm. sometimes it's like we take, we wait until.